Numerical expressions are numbers, operations, and grouping symbols, and a lot of today's should be a massive review. So the first thing we're going to review is exponents. A to the B is an exponent expression. A is the base and B is the exponent or sometimes called the power. The exponent indicates how many times you multiply the base to itself. For example, two to the fifth means one, two, three, four, five. Two to the fifth means that you're multiplying two five times. If you have your calculator, go ahead and pull it out because I want you to see how your calculator works and how smart and how not smart your calculator can be. So number one, negative three to the fourth. Put it in exactly as you see, parentheses, negative three, close your parentheses, raised to the fourth. To raise it to the fourth, you're looking for the button, I call it the caret button. On the TI calculators, most of the TI calculators, it looks like this. Some calculators have a button that says like Y to the X, that's the same button. Now negative three to the fourth means negative three times negative three times negative three times negative three. Should your answer be positive or negative? Positive because we have an even number of negatives. So this should give you 81 in your calculator. To contrast this, look at number four. Do you see where the negative is on number four? If you punch that into your calculator, a negative, then your parentheses, three raised to the fourth, that will give you negative 81 because your calculator is doing three to the fourth and then sticking the negative on. Okay, so negative three with the negative inside the parentheses, negative three times negative three times negative three, should our answer be positive or negative? Negative because we have an odd number of negatives. So this is negative 27. And what do you suppose negative three squared is? Positive nine. Negative outside of the parentheses, three to the third would still be negative 27 because they would do three to the third and then stick the negative on there. Now here's where I want you to see how smart or how not smart your calculator is. In your calculator, please try negative three squared with no parentheses. What does your calculator tell you? Negative nine. Your calculator is going to do exactly what you tell it to do. So you need to make sure when you're using a calculator to raise things to an exponent, make sure you know what you're intending to do. Are you trying to do the number negative three raised to the second? Or are you trying to square three and then put a negative on? Because what your calculator is going to do with this, with no x, with no parentheses, your calculator will do three squared and then stick the negative on the front. So if you're trying to do the number negative three raised to the second, you need to put parentheses around it like it shows in problem number three right there. Order of operations. Most of you know this as PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. The P stands for parentheses, and more specifically, do operations that occur within grouping symbols. The E is exponents or powers, so next you evaluate any exponents or powers. Step three is the M and the D, and I know you talked about this in Algebra 1, but I'm going to reiterate it. The M and the D, multiplication and division, multiplication isn't more powerful than division. You don't necessarily do the multiplication before the division. You do multiplication and or division from left to right. So if you have division that happens in the problem before multiplication, you would do the division first. Are you ready to have your mind just a little bit blown? 
division doesn't actually exist. There's no such thing as division. Because division is simply the multiplication of the reciprocal. Division is actually multiplication. They're the same thing. That might be a little hard for your brain to understand. Let's look at number four. Addition and subtraction, same thing. Addition and subtraction, one of them is not more powerful than the other. So if subtraction occurs first, do the subtraction first. Um, subtraction doesn't actually exist. There's no such thing as subtraction. I know, right? There's no such thing as subtraction. Think about it. 5 minus 3. It's not actually subtraction. It's actually addition of a negative number. This is 5 and, come on, pen, work, 5 and negative 3. So subtraction is addition. It's just addition of negative numbers. So addition and subtraction, make sure you do those operations from left to right when you're using PEMDAS. Okay, here's a couple examples. In your assignment, it's going to say show every step. I basically want to see that you've done order of operations with every single step. Because, yeah, you could just type this into your calculator exactly as it's shown, but that's not practicing order of operations. So for these problems, let's show every step. What would we do first? The parentheses. So inside the parentheses is negative 2 plus 5. So I'm going to rewrite this problem. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. What would we do next? We've done the parentheses, so next we do the exponent. So negative 4 plus 2 times 9. Next we do multiplication or division from left to right. 2 times 9 is 18. Oops, that's a plus, not a times. And then lastly, do the addition to get your final answer of 14. Number seven, there's a couple things that you need to be aware of in number seven, a couple little hitches. First, we do what's inside the parentheses. Well, the inside most parentheses are negative three. There's nothing actually happening in there. They're just using those parentheses to say, hey, this is definitely a negative three. So we have one minus a negative three. What is minus a negative? Plus, and one plus three is four. Next, we do the exponent. Four to the third. Pretty sure it's 64. The next step is where we run into a problem. Do we do 5 times 64 or do we do negative 5 times 64? Both answers are correct. You could do either way. So here I'm going to do 5 times 64, which is 320. And then I drop my minus sign down. If we want to, I know some of you learned at a young age, don't subtract, add the opposite. So change this to plus a negative 5. If you do negative 5 times 64, you get negative 320. And then there's addition between them. Notice in both cases, you end up with negative 8 and negative 320. The important thing here is that you don't lose that negative. So your final answer should be negative 328. Evaluate the expression for the given value of x. You might think I'm crazy, but I'm going to go a little bit nuts with parentheses. Everywhere that I see an x, I'm going to put parentheses. And then put the negative 2 inside those parentheses. Remember when I showed you how smart or not smart your calculator is? If you get into the habit of putting parentheses around every single variable, it will help you to enter what you're intending into your calculator correctly so your calculator will be smart. So plug that into your calculator exactly as it's shown. I believe you should get the answer when you have an expression with a numerator and a denominator, you actually have two sets of parentheses, even if you don't see parentheses written in there. 
The numerator is a grouping. The denominator is a grouping. So really, you kind of want to think of this as parentheses divided by parentheses. So we are going to put four in place of the x's. So three times four squared and negative six in place of the y's. If you're going to enter this in your calculator in one step, you would want to put parentheses around the entire top, which notice that means you'd have like two closing parentheses at the end. You'd also want parentheses around the entire bottom. Now it's honestly easier just to do the entire top and hit equals, do the entire bottom, hit equals, and then do the division. You should end up with six as your answer. We can combine six m squared and negative seven m squared. That would be negative one m squared minus 12 m. In order for them to be like terms, they must have the same letter and the same exponent. Number 11, we would have to start by distributing. So we'd have three x minus six Question, when we distribute the five, should we distribute five or should we distribute negative five? Either way, I would suggest that you distribute negative five just so that you use that negative for both of the terms. So this should be negative five x plus 40. If you just distribute five and not negative five, you would then need to subtract both of those terms. So you would need to subtract the five X and subtract the negative 40, which would be adding 40. So in this example, I would recommend that you make that a negative five and distribute the negative five. It's a negative five X become negative two X and negative six and 40 become positive 34. Write an expression for the area of the figure. Area is length times width. So we need to do two X plus Y times X. It would be best to write the X outside of a set of parentheses. When you see a problem like this, if it asks you to write an expression and it doesn't say simplify, notice it doesn't say simplify in there, Get that expression written, that's one of your answers. Then evaluate, that would be your second answer. Number 14 says write an expression and simplify. Volume is length times width times height. So we have our length times our width times our height. With multiplication, the order that you multiply things doesn't matter. So what's happening between the three and the x? They're multiply, so this is really three times two times x times x times x. The order that we write those things doesn't matter. Three times two is six. What is x times x times x? x cubed. Perimeter, you add all of the sides together. So we would add two times three x plus four plus the two plus the two y plus one plus the three times the quantity two x minus four plus the six. That's a long problem. What do you think we would need to do? Combine like terms, how do we get rid of those parentheses first? Distribute, so we would distribute and we would combine like terms. There are three types of terms here. There's X's, there's Y's, and there's numbers. So your final answer would be something times X plus something times Y plus something. And number 16, if you want to know how to do number 16, if you want a refresher on that, let me know. That problem is not on your homework and it won't be on a test unless it's a bonus question. So you can skip number 16. If you really, really want to check how to do that, let me know.